Well, hello everyone. This is the teaser for this coming Sunday, which would be June 20th, which happens to be Father's Day. So this is actually my sermon for Father's Day. Um, when I think of Father's Day compared to Mother's Day, uh, Mother's Day obviously gets a lot more fanfare than Father's Day does. Um, and I think fathers are pretty much okay with that. Normally, we're happy if we can go out and do something that we love to do on our on Father's Day or maybe get our favorite meal, whatever that may be. Um, I don't think too many fathers are expecting uh, major, major gifts. We're okay with the mothers getting the fanfare, and, and I think we're okay with that. Um, I think what a lot of things that as fathers, what we look at what we're supposed to do, I think some of that is we're supposed to instruct and uh, prepare our children for when they become adults. I, I look at that as as a father, and I have a daughter now who just turned 30. Um, I think the two biggest things I did was, you know, love her as my daughter, and, and second was try to prepare her for life, giving life instructions. Um prepare you know not with the idea that the world's utopia and you're gonna and every dream's gonna come true but more realistic goals about being hard working about preparing about not burning bridges if you change jobs uh being a hard worker um you know be respectful listen and, and those type of things and i think um you know she she has grown into that type of woman and she's doing very well and i like to think that some of those instructions have have helped out. We've we've talked now as she's an adult, and she told me which life lessons that were very beneficial and which ones were maybe, um, and outdated. But it seems as she's getting older and now she has her own child, she's realizing some of those that she thought was outdated or antiquated are actually not bad not bad advice. So that's all. Even as even now with an adult daughter, I just try to give wise advice about saving for retirement. Uh, you know, putting that money away, making good purchases. You know, if you find a place that you want to live, looking into buying a house, those type of things. And um, I think that's part of what our job is as fathers. Now, the passage I'm going to be looking at for Father's Day, um, a lot of people are going to be very familiar with this passage. It's Matthew chapter six, verses nine through fifteen. Matthew chapter six, verses nine through fifteen. And um, and we look at this passage as lessons from our Heavenly Father. Just as an earthly father, I give lessons to my daughter, and most of us as fathers try to give lessons to our children. This is a lesson from our Heavenly Father. And I'm actually going to take this lesson, again, if you read the passage ahead of time, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15, um, I'm pretty sure that most of you, if you've read it, are probably familiar with it. But what I'm going to do is actually break down each individual verse for this Sunday and go over how or what lesson or instruction we are being given by our Heavenly Father. Because if part of our jobs as Father is, our, is to teach and to help our children so that they become adults and can go and live on their own, and if that's part of our instructions, then instructions from our Heavenly Father should be very important and something that we should dig into. And since I think most of you are going to be very familiar with this passage, some of you may not, but I think if you go and read it, if, every, if we can teach the lessons or get the instructions that come from this, then any time you, you say this passage or you read this passage again, maybe it will rekindle or remind us of the lessons that are taught in this passage. So it's, it's where I'm planning to go on Father's Day. Um, I think it's. I think it should be a good lesson. I think uh, again. I think a lot of you will be familiar with the passage, and as we think about what fathers are going to be doing on Father's Day, I hope that you're able to enjoy your day doing something that you love to do. Um, if it's getting your favorite meal, I hope you enjoy whatever that meal may be. I just and hope for you. Hopefully, you'll be able to enjoy this day that's in your honor. Remember, as fathers, I always picture us uh, as men in general. We tend to be want to be problem solvers. We want to be the people to come in and have the answer. And a lot of times, um, uh, women will just want to express their feelings or share something. They don't want us to try to solve their problems. But it's hard for men to throw off that red cape that we think we need to be that superhero that comes swooping in to save the day. And I know for our children, we try to swoop in and save the day, and same with our spouses. Um, but 
on this Father's Day, take off your cape, relax, and enjoy. So I look forward to seeing everyone who can join us on Sunday now that restrictions are being lightened across the state and across the country. Um, we still have, like I said, the, the pews are still roped off. Um, we still encourage people to wear masks as they get to their seats, but uh, we know a lot more people are able to be out, and we're hoping to see more and more of you coming back and, and rejoining us in church. We know it's uh, easy to break the habit. Um, some people haven't been to church in 15 months, 18 months, a year, um, and it's easy to get out of that habit. And it takes an effort to try to get back into that habit. So we look forward for those and we welcome those who are looking forward to getting back into their routine again and coming and worshiping um, together, worshiping the word like it says in Hebrews 10.25, do not give up coming together in times of fellowship. So we look forward to anyone who's looking forward to joining us again. Until uh, Sunday, see you then.